Welcome in YouTube, it's your boy The Crow Show, home of the smoothest voice on Twitch. In today's video we're going to be testing out Background Player to see if we can push it to the limits inside of Solo Queue. So we're grouping it up with Bond so we can see the aura of our teammates as well as Fixated so we can walk fast and hopefully hide our scratch marks and Iron Will so we can still get these saves if we're still injured. Let's give it a try, shall we? Okay, so full disclosure, I actually really struggled with putting this video together. It was originally going to be just a TikTok where I just get some clips and showcase the power of background player. It took a lot of games to get the intro footage and uh, it reached a point where I started to keep track of how many times I got value out of background player while playing. One thing to keep in mind is that I am a solo queue player. I was never on comms with anybody during the recordings and I think that would have helped a great deal. And I'll provide some examples throughout the video where people are on comms giving, uh, you know, call outs to their teammates. One thing I discovered is that people go down against walls quite a bit or are up against big rocks or trees and stuff. That's another problem in the community we don't really talk about very much because, you know, if somebody's nearby, they can't get the flashlight save when you're up against a rock. <laughs> and so something to keep in mind and also background player really struggles with indoor maps because there's just walls everywhere i would say that background player probably works best with flashbang because if you get those indoor maps or if people go down against the wall you can get saves with flashbang but full disclosure i'm not very good with flashbang so uh the nice thing is though i did learn to use my flashlight quite effectively during the recording of this footage. What does that mean for the direction of this video? Well, this video is now going to be a discussion of whether background player needs to be changed at all, doesn't need to be nerfed, doesn't need to be buffed. I'll present to you some arguments and then a conclusion at the end. And you let me know what you think. Do you think it should be changed in any way? So the first clip I'm going to show you is from my pal Field Agent Reaper. Posted this on Twitter, got a lot of views. This is Reaper getting really good value out of background player for a pallet save. You scared? <laughs> fair sorry. perk, fair perk, so fair. Absolutely fair perk. So you can hear Reaper saying fair perk, it's a fair perk because there was nothing Trickster could have done to prevent that play. There was actually no counter for that. It was just perfect timing, got huge distance. And in that very specific scenario, yes, it doesn't seem very fair to the killer. Now, a big reason why I started recording footage using the build, trying to prove whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether it's fine, was this tweet from Eggham. Flashlights don't work 30% of the time. Lightborn and Franklin's exist. Palace saves have a massive margin of error and people going for saves aren't on a gen or healing and background players, the worst perk is the hill we're dying on. Hens chimed in, he said, if you play a no mobility killer and a four man dies under pallet with background player, there is literally no input from killer's side and you just straight up lose, which is insanely frustrating and a situation nobody should be put in. I'll make a video on it with friends later to prove it. Now, I don't think Hens actually made the video, which is fine, but the thing is, in solo queue, I didn't get a lot of opportunities to save people either with a pallet or a flashlight. Like, um, here, let me, let's just get into it right now. So here's a quick snapshot of the spreadsheet I designed while I was capturing footage. Now keep in mind, I estimate I probably played about a dozen games before I started tracking it because I was like, wait a minute, I'm not getting a lot of value out of background player during this recording. You'll notice I got background player value in four out of 22 trials, one of which I got two saves, both were with flashlights, and the other three trials, just a single save. Now I realize it's a small sample, but I was getting background player value 18% of the time. Now I'm a pretty seasoned veteran at this game. I have over 4,000 hours played. Mind you, I'm not the absolute best person for flashlight saves, but I feel this sample is a good case for what to expect in solo queue. Now I imagine my success would be higher in a survive with friends on a discord call, 
but I'm a nerd with no friends. <laughs> You'll also notice I scribbled notes for each round. You can see a lot of gamers either gave up on first hook or disconnected, which, you know, I'm not gonna get value out of my build at that point. Other reasons I couldn't get value out of my build was that many of my teammates went down against walls, trees, or rocks. Other times I played against killers or perks that soft counter the build. Wesker, for example, when he uses his special power, slams people up against a wall or a rock, etc., makes it really difficult to sprint in there with background player to get the save. And there was one dude I ran into twice in a row. He was running knockout and a full slug build. So he just wasn't picking people up. And so if I'm just not picking people up, I'm not going to get value. Other times I just flopped and I don't mind owning that. Flashlight save windows are wide open, meaning that most people can get the saves, but sometimes I just flopped. I don't know why, just human error. And I do see that quite a bit in solo queue games. Let's analyze a couple of clips where I was able to get a save and get value out of background player. So this trapper just happened to be close to us, faces us, and we get the save. On this one, I was shadowing the Jane and during the event, thankfully you get some extra iron will. And here is really good value. I don't think I get it without background player. In this clip, I was able to get the flashlight save from quite a distance. It would have probably been possible without background player, but it definitely helped there. The perk is also really effective when they go down on pallets. Now, if I had windows of opportunity that might help identify when they go down at pallets, but I do find iron will helps a great deal when it comes to sneaking up on killers. So there you have it. I've provided some really good examples of background player getting really good value. At the same time, I've provided you with data that shows that I just didn't get value out of the perk a lot of the time. Again, only 18% of the time I got value out of background player while playing in solo queue. Now solo queue is the most popular way that people play this game. So I think that's the most fair way of assessing this. So my conclusion, background player I think is fine where it's at. It does suck when you have a killer, a slow killer, like an M1 killer or a killer with no mobility like Hag or Trickster who downs somebody at a pallet and somebody runs from across the entire map and gets a pallet save. I know that really sucks because there's really no counterplay there but I think those situations don't present themselves very often. Also keep in mind, and Eggham kind of pointed this out in their tweet, when somebody is lurking for a background player save, they're not healing somebody else. They're not fixing generators. So they're not actually advancing the game. They're actually kind of hurting their team, depending on the situation. Now. That's something I tried to keep in mind while I was playing. I tried not to just follow somebody as soon as they were injured. I would try to go for the save if they were close to me while I was working on a generator or trying to be, you know, like as efficient as I can. In the one case in the trapper save, I think I was being healed at the time or I was healing somebody else. So my conclusion, do I think background player needs to be nerfed? Do I think it needs to be buffed? Or does it stay the same? I think background player is fine exactly where it's at. I don't think it needs any changes. And again, I know that there are times when you cannot counter it, but killers have that opportunity as well. Like, you know, if somebody gets downed and you're working on a generator that's almost fixed, you can't really counter it in that spot if they have pain resonance and they hit your generator for 15% damage. And then they come and hit your generator for um, Pop Goes the Weasel and magically your generator is down to like 60% as a result. So if you agree with me, disagree with me, that is totally fine as long as you state your case. And please, I recommend you put that in your comments and make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. It really helps with the algorithm as I try to grow here on YouTube. I'm also very active on Twitter and I stream on Twitch maybe once every two weeks or so. Uh, so make sure you check the description for my links to Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, etc. 
Uh, I also have a podcast, Red Ring Podcast, where I've interviewed some really cool people like Elix, The Corcade, Wojako, Slushy, Kyle TG, to name a few. So be sure to check out the podcast. It's available on all platforms. And if you want to see more videos like this, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to find a niche, um, try to carve out a unique spot in the DVD space. I know it's really difficult because people are, you know, putting out guides and people juicing killers for five gen runs, stuff like that. Uh, so I think these talky videos, these discussion videos can be a lot of fun and putting this together, I had a really good time. So I hope you enjoy and I hope to catch you next time. Well, <laughs> that's it for me.